So the first thing we're going to do is go over page 23. If you want to put this on pause for a moment to get your workbook out, um, that would be great. And of course anybody that did have the full classes, maybe this will be a review for you as well. So we're going to go over just those seven definitions on page 23 and then I'm going to come back and talk about the history uh, part of the class that some of you are missing because you're not getting two classes this week. Here we go. All right. So hopefully you have page 23 open and you see the first seven definitions that we're studying and the quiz will be on. The very first word is the word beat. And this word is a word that describes what we feel when a song is going. It's on the inside of us. You don't see the beat and you don't always hear the beat in a song. Instead, it is something that while the music is happening or the band leader might set the beat ahead so that everybody has the same beat inside them when they start, it's the pulse. It's the heart of the song. It makes no sound and you can't see it. So how do musicians know what the beat is? Well, I already said, sometimes the band leader will set the pace or the tempo is what you could call it. But they also are going to look at this time signature. And the time signature is not fancy. It's just a symbol with two numbers. And the top number tells you how many beats are in a measure. So I just said you can't see the beat. Look can't see a beat. Not in a single measure can you see a beat because it is felt, established here, that there will be four of them in every measure. How fast it goes depends on how fast the tempo is set when the band starts. The bottom number tells you how many, uh, what kind of a note gets a beat so basically it's an abbreviation for a quarter or one-fourth so you could fit four quarter notes into one measure now I don't want you to get confused about this I just want you to be sure in that little section on your page 23 that you have wor written the word beat on the top line and that you have the word note on the bottom line so that when I ask you how many beats are in a certain song because you look at the time signature at the front of the song to tell me all you do is look at the top number so 3 a time it's 3 2 4 time it's 2 12 a time it's 12 you don't do any math you just accept top numbers telling me how many beats are in each of these measures we're not going to worry too much about the bottom, but it does refer to the note that equals a beat. Now notice that the bar lines are what separate the sections of music that the musician knows each has four beats. And notice that they didn't do slash when they made it from top to bottom, nice and neat. So the the bar lines are the ones that separate the sections or the measures which they now can put music into. The double bar line only occurs at the end of sections or songs. The notation, I have some right here. To notate, to take note, to scribe, to write. It's just written music. It's the sheet music. And so if I was to put a whole note here, which of course takes up the whole measure in 4-4 four, four time because it gets 4 beats, but don't worry about that, we'll get to it. Then we know that that's notation because I wrote it. It's that easy. How about rhythm? Well, the beat you can't see and you can't hear it, but rhythm you can. Those are the notes that you hear. The long and short notes that the musician is going to play, that's the rhythm. It's the sound of the music. It's what the drummer does. It's what the singer does. Not talking about the highs and lows, just how long 
the notes are played for, or how short, or whether or not they take a break. So that's it. Beat is the pulse, measures are used to create sections, and they are created with bar lines. Dar double bar lines occur only at the end, and a time signature has two jobs. It tells your musician on the top how many beats are in each of these measures and what kind of a note, in this case quarter notes, gets a beat. Written music is notation. That's all you have to know, but make sure you understand it and even maybe watch this a few times so that you're fully reviewed and prepared. Now, everybody's been telling me how much they like Huckleberry being in the video, so we better have him say a quick hello. Huckleberry, come on over. Well, there he is. You know what Huckleberry's saying? I heard him say it. I did. He's saying, Hey kids, you can learn how to read music too. Either that or he's saying, Let me out of here. Okay, now that that's done, I want to go over something else that we're discussing this week. And the other kids that had class twice, they had to start class off with a question. And the question was, why did the arts start? It's a good question. Why did it start? You get the prehistoric man very busy with his day and her day. Staying alive was a 24-7 kind of thing. So it wasn't like they were laying around bored all the time and just decided, well, I think I'll start painting and singing and dancing. These things were probably inspired by some events that caused the first time for all of them. Now, we all come out as babies singing and making sounds anyway, so that part is kind of already set up in us. And certainly when we see a baby drawing in the sand with a stick, the arts are apparently already happening long before anybody teaches us about them. So, the way I explain how the arts started, and there's lots of different reasons why and ways why, I'm only going to talk about the two main ones we're going to discuss in class. I tell this story of these cave guys who go out in the morning into the scary world that they don't know anything about, and of course language doesn't really exist yet, except body language and things that we still use very much today to communicate with each other. And on this hunting trip, one of them gets hurt. And the other one comes running over when he hears his friend screaming. And the friend can't say what happens. There's just, you know, confusion and jumping about. So they head back to the cave, and when everybody runs out, you know, where's the food? How'd the hunting trip go? Um, the person who this happened to, completely frustrated, bends down, doesn't think about it, just bends down and grabs a bunch of mud and starts smearing it on the cave wall, painting a picture of this animal that attacked him. And when he's done putting the picture and pointing and saying, ooh, ooh, everybody gets it. Communication. That was one of the main reasons that the arts started. It was another means of communicating. And communicating is very important to the survival of the human species. So, well, actually any species. Just think of how even the whales and the dolphins, and they all speak to each other to survive, to help each other, to warn each other, to set their territories for food. <sighs> Something strange goes on, and it's not just communication, though. He didn't just tell his friends and his family what happened by drawing this picture. He looks at this drawing, never saw one before, and starts to think to himself, looks just like it. It's like, just like the thing that tried to attack me. So he starts having this habit, before he goes hunting, of going to that same cave wall all the time, and dancing around it, moving around it. He's not calling it dancing, but he's moving and jumping and making sounds to scare it away, like, you're not going to do this to me again. Hmm. He teaches his children to do it, and so the next generation, because they were taught to do that, goes down to the wall before the big cave um, 
seasonal hunting session goes on and they all dance around. As a matter of fact, they use the painting and the dancing with the movements of how to hunt. They use it all so that they can teach the next generation. And once it becomes this habit, every day, every time they hunt, every year at the same season, they start to wear the same costumes, make the same sounds and movements together, now you have visual art and music and dance all working together as part of the second main reason why the art started. It was a part of rituals. It might not seem like a very important thing, but we're going to be discussing how important rituals were and still are to the survival and the uh, movement forward of the human family. So, basically, put down on the front of your workbook the prehistoric man used music and art for communication and rituals. And then next week, we're going to start to really discuss what that means, what it looks like, what it sounds like, and here's the big question. Are we still doing it today? And if so, do we need to? Just how important are these arts? Now that we are starting to discover why and how they started. Hope this helps everybody. See you in class.